Hello. In this video, we will introduce the six trigonometric functions, which an angle of a right angle relates to a ratio of the two side lengths. On the left side of the page are the six trigonometric functions and a diagram that goes with it. From the diagram, we see we have the angle theta on the right triangle and the two sides, x and y, along with r, the hypotenuse. So in this example, we are given sine theta is 5 over 13, and we want to find the other trig functions that go with it. Let's label what 5 over 13 represents, y and r. This is in quadrant 1 also, so let's draw a diagram as well. We have the right triangle with the angle theta, and we know sine is y over r, so we can write 5 for the vertical side and 13 for the hypotenuse r. We're missing x, but we can find that using the Pythagorean theorem. Also, we need it to find some of the other trig functions. So let's write our equation and solve for x. Isolating the x squared term, we can then use the square root property to find what x is. We end up with plus or minus 12. Only 12 works here though, since we know it's in quadrant 1, x has to be positive. Now let's find the other trig functions. Cosine theta is x over r. So 5 over 13. Tangent theta is y over x. So 5 over 12. Cotangent theta is x over y. So 12 over 5. Secant theta is r over x, so 13 over 12. And cosecant is r over y, so 13 over 5. Whoops, I wrote... COT instead of CSC. Let me change that. Here's a similar example. We are given that theta, the angle, is between pi and 3 pi over 2. This in degrees is equal to, or is between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. Note, we will learn how to how these equal these values in another video. So this means we are in quadrant 3. Let's draw a diagram to help us understand better. Now that we have our right triangle in the third quadrant, we can label our 
known values for cosine. We know cosine is x over r, so our r is 2 and our x is negative root 3. Now we need to find our missing value y. We use the Pythagorean theorem to do it. So we write our equation and solve for y. Isolating y squared and using the square root property, we get y equals plus or minus 1. Since we're in the third quadrant, y is negative, so y is negative 1. Now we have all the information we need to find the rest of the trigonometric functions. Sine of theta is y over r, so negative 1 over 2. Tangent of theta is y over x, so negative 1 over negative root 3. We can also rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by root 3. Doing so, we end up with root 3 over 3. Secant theta is r over x, so 2 over negative root 3. Again, we can rationalize the denominator by multiplying top and bottom by root 3. Cosecant is r over y, so 2 over negative 1, which simplifies to just negative 2. And cotangent is x over y, so negative root 3 over negative 1, which simplifies to negative root 3. For this example, we are given a point and want to find sine theta and cosine theta. So let's plot the point on the graph and see what we know. Plotting the point 1, negative 3, we see that it lands in quadrant 4. Let's mark the angle theta as well. find sine theta and cosine theta, we need what r is. So we use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for r plus
plugging in x and y values 1 and negative 3. Solving for r using the square root property, we end up with plus or minus negative root 10. Positive 10 is what we want since r is a distance and is typically positive. Now we can find sine theta and cosine theta by plugging in their corresponding ratios. Sine theta is y over r, so negative 3 over root 10. And cosine theta is x over r, so 1 over root 10. If you want, you don't really have to. We can rationalize both answers by multiplying the top and bottom by root 10. Next example. Similar problem. Let's plot the point to see where it is at. It's in quadrant 2. Let's mark our known information and also theta, the angle. In order to find cosine theta and sine theta, we need r. So we use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for r. We plug in our x and y values and solve. And after using the square root property, we get r equals 13 since Negative 13 is not a positive distance. Now we find cosine theta, x over r, so negative 5 over 13. Then we find sine theta, y over r, so 12 over 13. In this example, we want to find all six trig functions of theta with the given point negative root 2, negative root 2. So let's plot the point and label theta on the graph. Let's write down what all of the trigonom trigonometric functions are real quick.
need to find r. So let's plug in our x and y value into the Pythagorean theorem and solve for r. We end up with r equals 2. Now we can use our, our known values to find all of the trigonometric functions. In this example, we want to see if sine 75 degrees is less than sine 85 degrees. So let's see what the angles are for the two. 85 degrees is definitely larger than 75 degrees, but we want to know if sine of the angle 75 degrees is less than sine of the angle 85 degrees. And what this means is the ratio of sine 85 degrees larger than ratio of 75 degrees. We know that sine of theta is equal to y over r. So drawing the angles with the same r, I wrote r1 in this example. we can see that the y value for sine 85 degrees is slightly larger than the y value for sine 75 degrees. So the state statement sine 75 degrees is less than sine 85 degrees is true. Now, we want to see if cosine 75 degrees is less than cosine 85 degrees. So again, let's look at a diagram drawing the angles with a radius r. Now we know that cosine of theta is x over r. So comparing the corresponding x values for cosine 75 and cosine 85. We see that the x value corresponding to cos 85 is actually smaller or less than cosine 75. So this statement is false. In this example, we want to know which quadrants cosine theta equals one half can be in. What this means is in what quadrant with angle theta can the ratio of cosine theta be positive one half? And we know cosine is x over r, and r is always positive, and x can either be negative or positive, but we want positive cosine. Since we have cosine theta equals one half, so the possible places where cosine is positive 
is where x is positive. So quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. Similar example, we want to find which quadrants sine theta equal to negative 2 over root 8 can be in. We know sine of theta is y over r, where r is always positive and y can be either positive or negative. And we want negative y in this case. Since we were given sine theta equal to negative 2 over root 8. So the possible places where y is negative would be in quadrant 3 or quadrant 4.